We are building a backdate Porsche 911. It is starting on a 1979 SC shell. What typically takes two years, we're gonna try to complete in less than 10 months. Jesus Christ. Last time you saw us, if you've been checking out our other videos, was on our CSF Evo X. This year, we've decided to get into a really cool project. We are building a backdate Porsche 911. It is starting on a 1979 SC shell. We've selected to work with a very uh, amazing individual. His name is Simo Verhanta. He's uh, been doing Porsches and backdates, uh, you know, for his whole life. He has a full shop work shed here in the behind his house. We're in Laverne, California, and we want to take you guys along for this ride, this journey. We're going to try to have this car ready to go for SEMA 2021. Hopefully there's going to be a show this year. And uh, we're really starting from absolute scratch. This is going to be a huge, you know, task for us to be able to do it right. But this is going to be one of those mind blowing Porsches that I hope just stands the test of time is going to be something that you would find, you know, flipping a page in a Porsche book. So um, let's go talk to Simo. Let's get started with the project and uh, let's show you what it's like. Today is about day five into it. So uh, we'll show you where we're at. Good to see you. Good to see so everybody, you. this is Simo Verhanta. Uh, Simo, you know, a lot of people may know you in the Porsche world. They may not know you if they're not so deep into Porsches. Um, how long have you been doing this? I think I started in uh, 1985. It started as a hobby and uh, hobby became a more serious hobby and uh, eventually we started really building them since the 80s. We restored over 400 cars. Wow. And uh, Porsches, I don't know, 20, 30, 40. Wow, it's a passion for you. I've gotten to know you over the last course of a year. Uh, you and I have become friends and now we're starting this incredible journey together. And here we have this 1979 SC uh, body, which yep. you've sold to me as part of the yep. program and the, and, and the project that we're doing. Yeah, we bought it as a project that we were going to build into a twin turbo white body uh, back date. And uh, it's a accident free, good California car. And that's what we always look for. And I buy such cars so that they sit and wait for their turn. This was a perfect fit for the project that you wanted to build. And uh, we're obviously extremely excited about it. It's a good starting point for the car. We got it the whole car. Um, I hate the dirty aspect of it. And I guess everybody does. Yeah. You know, one of the things that he told me is he likes to keep clean and only get dirty for one day. Yeah. So I think uh, we've missed that part of it. So he's got the shell shitting out here in the sun. We don't mind getting dirty one day and really going crazy at it. Uh, we took every nut and bolt out of it, wire harness, insulation, uh, and uh, it's just sitting on jack stands right now. And we built a uh, jig for it that is right there next to it. We're gonna bolt it onto the jig today, and after that, we can take it to the next level. We're gonna strip it to bare metal in and out and uh, put an etching primer on it to protect it and keep it from corroding. You don't cut any corners, and you know how to build a Porsche arguably just as good as anybody else in the world. Thank you very and much. And I think that's what's gonna be really telling throughout this whole process. Everyone's gonna get a really good insight into how to build a Porsche to the highest level. Everybody that we work with has really jumped on board and uh, have offered quick service. We are building a SEMA car. It is January 8th. We're at the beginning of the year and this guy is already saying we are under the gun. Yeah, we got this. Everyone kind of rushes the last two, three months, two weeks, last night to get their car ready. Simo, uh, because of his age, wisdom, and expertise, is doing it the other way. He wants to run right out of the gate and cruise into the finish line. Let's go over and look at the jig that right. you built for the car because I think this is really cool. We've built lots of these before and uh, our typical jigs mount to the suspension points on the car and uh, the downside to that is, of course, you can't put the suspension on it. So in order to put the suspension on it, we have to take it off the jig put the suspension on and it's just a lot of extra time. We built the jig that now can stay on the car all the way through the build and uh, we're hoping that uh, uh, when we take it off of it, it'll go on the wheels on the ground. We made it height adjustable and uh, I think this is gonna work much better for us. This is really impressive and I think everybody who's gonna start to enjoy this YouTube documentary from the beginning sees 
the mythology that you go into this. You know, uh, we have some special plans for the body, which are, uh, you know, which is a secret. And uh, we are having to do a lot of things in a sequence to be able to meet the project timeline. To build it right is two years, and uh, we're not working on that one car at every moment. Sometimes it's sitting at a dipping, or it's sitting at a paint shop, or it's sitting somewhere. We have to have a very tight schedule on it. So, you know, what typically takes two years, we're gonna try to complete in less than 10 months. Jesus Christ. That was a big reason why I decided to work with Simo. Uh, I knew he would be able to deliver. Uh, he's diligent, his work is exceptional, and this is gonna be one of those one-of-a-kind Porsches. Here we have uh, a backdate build that you've done. It's a 964 backdated, all steel, sunroof delete, uh, steel bumpers, four liter engine, six-speed transmission with limited slip. Bilstein suspension, custom built gauges, ducktail, all the trim is done in nickel. Obviously the wheels don't belong to it, they're just roller wheels, but uh, we're having some wheels made for it. Basically it's a turbo body, but backdated, uh, 73 style. It's more of a passion than a business. My wife says that it's not a business, stop doing it. <laughs> She's probably right. We work on every detail. I, I think my philosophy is kind of simple that a perfect car is a sum of perfect details. We are a team here, Eddie and Tito and August, uh, that work with us here. Uh, we're extremely fortunate to have them here. They are masters of their own crafts. I'm just a small part of this project. It, this is a collaborative effort for all of us. The fact that you chose to come here, we are all very humbled by that. You know, you have someone from my generation working with someone who knows Porsches inside and out from an older generation. And, you know, the ethos of this car is to be able to create something that is a real nice twist between the heritage of 911 from the 70s mixed with, you know, modern technology and style from 2021. So, uh, you know, this car has a four liter engine, yes. correct? Can we take a look at it? There it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah wow. so it's a four liter with uh, trowel bodies and uh, AEM engine management system, serpentine belt drive. Uh, a lot of custom parts inside, custom heads, pistons, cans. Um, we have no idea how much power it's going to make, but I expect that it'll make pretty good power. Every detail is just looking perfect from the wiring to the plumbing. He's using the same XRP HS79 hose that you would have seen on our Evo. Uh, so it's all high quality materials. It's finished meticulously. I love the finishes of the ITV plenums. Uh, it just looks excellent. You know, Thank that's you. the adjective that comes to my mind when I'm looking at this. Um, estimated power, what do you think you're going to be at right now with this 4 liter engine? I hope that we get close to 400. Damn. That would be nice. Wow. Um, 400 horsepower out of this light body, that's amazing. So. Yeah, it, it actually feels very quick because the car is a lightweight car. Yeah. So we've taken a lot of the weight off of it and uh, we're looking forward to driving it. That's awesome. Perhaps my favorite engine in the whole shop, it's a 3.4 liter twin plug with 46 millimeter Weber's. It's going to my 1971 911E that we have a complete number matching drivetrain for and I decided that I wanted to build a Jekyll and Hyde car where I can switch between a crazy motor and the stock number matching motor during a weekend. So we have two different bumpers for it, two different rear wow. panels, tail panels, so I can literally just switch it and make it all stock or then if I want to go fast, I'll put this motor and this tra second transmission for it. Hey, what a life. This guy is building some of the nicest Porsches in the world and he's got the options to switch engines and bumpers out and uh, I don't think it gets any better than that. It's my favorite motor. It has custom made heads, pistons, powder rods, GT3 crank. It's all best of the best internally. Then, you know, you have this blue car and this is one that I've been just Googling on, you know, just oozing over every time I come over. Uh, it's funny because we've been consulting with John Sabal, you know, esteemed uh, automotive designer to do the rendering for my car and I had sent him a picture of this and he had asked over our Zoom session a couple of days ago, he said, what's the color of the car? Simo is not going to tell anybody what the color of this car is, so he calls it... Code blue. We call code it blue. code blue. Um, <laughs> yeah, if we had a dollar for every person that wanted the color code, I could take the day off. It worked out well. It, we just got lucky with this and... Uh, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. So we make a right fender oil cooler that sits right here in front of the uh, passenger wheel. And uh, you know, it's one of those items that's getting harder to get from Porsche. And we've been able to modernize it with a lot of technology and benefits and features. 
So uh, there'll be a link in the description so you guys can check it out. I got super interested in the cars that it goes into, hence why I wanted to build this car. Um, and now I'm learning so much, not just from my own personal research, but from everything that Simo is telling me. And really one of the things that I'm starting to really appreciate are the different finishes and touches that go into the details of the exterior because that's where we are in the project. These are all nickel, yep. correct? Yeah, nickel plated, yes. So it's not chrome, it's nickel. And if you look at this, it really gives a nice vintage warm feel to the build. You know, the color choices have been my biggest challenge. Uh, I want them to stand the test of time that you can look at them over and over and not get tired of it. So I'm trying to stay away from bright reds and bright yellows and uh, make him uh, a little bit like Dr. Porsche's idea was to be conservative. Mm -hmm. He was conservative in color, in color choices. I'm also looking forward to being able to use your oil coolers. Uh, I'm really excited about that. These motors aren't really air-cooled motors. They are mm -hmm. air and oil cooled. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the cooling is through your oil coolers. So we're very excited and we're looking forward to being able to use those excellent oil coolers. Thank you. I'm learning a lot and I think being in this business, you know, it's not just about how many parts you can sell, it's really about the experience and the growth that you get from enjoying high performance in the aftermarket tuning community. This is exactly why I wanted to work with him rather than just a shop that just turns and burns them out and you're just another customer. He's really taking the time to explain to me and hopefully we can explain to everybody who's watching what goes into building a legitimate high level 911. I've had great mentors. Mr. Roof was a mentor for me from way back from the 80s and uh, he inspired me to aim for the stars and uh, I know I'm just walking in his shadows and trying to trying to learn the little tidbits of what he does and uh, it's just become a passion. What do we got over here? You got an old 356? Yes, that's a 1956 uh, 356 that we found in a storage unit. Uh, the car was taken apart in 1971 and uh, had not seen daylight since then. Uh, every nut and bolt has been restored. It's not quite done yet. We're waiting for half a dozen parts. It runs and drives. Um, all the colors are original. These are, we, we got a letter from uh, Reuter, the bodybuilder, and they sent us color samples or what everything, leather sample, carpet, uh, and all that. So we matched everything back to the original. I'm excited to see it when it's all finally done and driving and on the road. This is the Jekyll and Hyde car. The 71, that, uh, it's a 71 911E with mechanical fuel injection, sunroof, air conditioning, and the S trim and S brakes. So essentially it has the same brakes that the 75 turbos had, the big aluminum calipers. And we're restoring it to 100% original except that occasionally it will get the other motor and transmission in Jekyll it. Jekyll motor. Jekyll motor, yes. <laughs> yeah, or high, whichever it yeah. is, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Is that another code blue car? That's a code blue. Okay. It's, it's, going to, it's a 79 turbo. I found it in the desert. Here's the motor for it. Um, this will have the same red interior in it that you see in that 356. We're going to do it a little bit 959 style, so it will have everything red inside. It's gonna have a little bit of a twist to it. Uh, since I'm gonna keep it, I'm not too concerned about the originality on it. Uh, it will look fairly stock, but it has some nice little twist to it. And uh, these are the two cars that I'll drive with you when you take your, your car out. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and so, Simo, I really appreciate you uh, letting us come into your shop. You know, uh, a lot of guys at your level sometimes are kind of secretive about how they work. And the fact that you, one, wanted to work with me and took a chance on the build that I wanted to do, but two, also allowed us to bring our media team in to kind of, you know, enjoy the journey that we're gonna go on for the next 10 months to build this car. I think it's exciting. I think everybody who's gonna be watching this is gonna be really engaged into it. And I think it's really gonna be a testament and a showcase to the work that you and your team, Tito and Eddie, put together. So everybody, thank you so much for uh, enjoying episode one of our Porsche 911 Back Day Project build. Uh, I'm here with Simo Verahanta. Uh, my name is Robbie. I'm the owner of CSF. And uh, I hope you guys are gonna enjoy the rest of this journey. And we will be back once, I guess, the car comes back from dip, yeah. right? That's yeah. the plan. So we'll be back in a couple weeks and you guys will uh, see what's next. Thanks. Thank you. Why don't we talk about that? This is crazy. That's yeah. the best plate ever. This is great. Yep. So we're excited. Yeah, me too.